Hello, Edgehogs. Are you okay? Are you okay? Now, that's a reference to something else that I'm going to be looking at, I think, tomorrow night, actually, with with uh, Sean Atwood again. That's the Philip Schofield thing. That was Holly Willoughby. Obviously, those outside the UK won't know too much about this, but a famous... Actually, that's another thing. That'll be tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Now, we're talking about Meghan and obviously Prince Harry. A lot of you will know this, a lot may not, but Prince Harry has been involved in a court case. How many court cases? It's really weird, the court cases thing, because I feel like when I was younger, there weren't as many court cases. And now it's like Johnny Depp, he's in one. Then Alec Baldwin's involved in one, and Gwyneth Paltrow's involved in one. And like in the UK, we had the Jamie Vardy, uh, um, and no, sorry, it was Rebecca Vardy and uh, Colleen Rooney, which was one about footballers and which soccer players and those kinds of things. And uh, now even a royal is in court. Of course, that's just my feeling because I know that back in the day there were court cases. Uh, O.J. Simpson springs to mind. Michael Jackson was often in a court case. So uh, that was happening. It just feels... Do you guys get that feeling the last couple of years? Anyway, Prince Harry is in there. The reason he's in court, for those who don't know already, is um, he is he's suing, I believe, is that the right technical term? Uh, the Mirror Group, which is a group of British newspapers, The Mirror being the most famous ones, um, alleging that he has been the victim of phone hacking. So Prince Harry has appeared to fight back tears, that's how everyone's reporting it, as he finished giving evidence in the phone hacking trial at the High Court, saying that there was hard evidence that he had been illegally targeted by Mirror Group newspapers. He spent eight hours this former royal or current royal, I don't know what you might call him, in the witness box and has to have been wondering, I think, whether the past few years involving Meghan Markle and his relentless attacks on his own family have been worth it. Because it's just, I mean, he must have been sitting in that, th just thinking, you know what, I could have just staged them and just carried on riding in the gold chariots and had a nice life, because this can't be what he wants. Now, this channel, I don't want this channel to be one of those ones where we just attack, attack, attack. I know that would get more views and subscribers and all those kinds of things, but I just find that boring as an outlook. I don't believe in purely evil people and purely good and bad and all those kinds of things. I don't think Prince Harry is evil. I think he's a bit dim. Uh, well, he's very dim by his own admission, and there's you know, nothing wrong with that. That happens. I think he's been misled. Um, and I think he blames everybody else apart from himself. But at the end of the day, what we're dealing with here is quite possibly, and I, I, you know, this is this is I'm not saying this about the Mirror Group in particular. Quite possibly true. Let's be honest. It's 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 almost unfathomable fathomable <laughs> that I might even be able to pronounce that word. It's unfathomable. Fathom. <laughs> Jeez. It's unfathomable. This is great doing lives. I'm going to do more lives, actually, I think, and I'm going to call it something like Edge TV in honour of SPTV, Suppressive Person TV. That's my my friends in Scientology or the former Scientologists. I quite like that idea, Edge TV. And I'll put a banner up at the front and comment on comment more on sort of live uh, pop culture royals and things going on at the moment uh, as opposed to the episodes, the, the full episodes that are like, you know, cults and true crime and really in-depth episodes. Um, anyway, why is everyone asking if I'm Jewish? Such a bizarre, such a bizarre thing. People are a bit obsessed, aren't they? Unfortunately. So, um, yes, Prince Harry <laughs> is, has undoubtedly been hacked over the years. Come on, let's be honest. And that happened to his father, right? Do you, I don't know if you guys remember, if you've seen that bit in The Crown, uh, Prince Charles did get hacked. And that's how we know that he wanted to crawl inside Camilla's Tampax or something. It was something disgusting. If you don't know about that, that did happen. That was hacking in, in essence. Um, and it does happen. And I used to work at The Sun, which uh, owned was part of the, the news of the world, which was found out for phone hacking. The Mirror, which was led by Piers Morgan, was also, I believe, um, found to have done the phone hacking. And they even admit that, but they're saying, but we didn't hack Harry. And I just think, well, you know, if you were hacking everyone else, why wouldn't you hack Harry? Because he brings 
all sorts of you know viewers to to your newspaper. So it doesn't make sense to me the idea that they didn't do it. However, however, I just think it's a bit much now to be popping back in. They've just had this whole car crash thing or this being chased by the paparazzi in a car in New York where they've looked utterly moronic and attention seekers. South Park has brought to attention to the brought attention to the fact that they are doing this world privacy tour. And it's been five minutes since the New York thing. It's been 10 minutes since South Park. And already they've got to be back in the news again, front page. They would have known this. And Prince Harry's saying, oh, well, you know, I realized that this was time to do it. And the reason was because of Meghan. And he doesn't really elucidate on that. You know, he doesn't really clarify what he means, except like, I guess the suggestion is the press have treated her so badly. She's such a victim. And hey, I can relate to that feeling, right? You, you must all have this. I bet you guys have this feeling where um, <laughs> if somebody insults you, fine, right? But then they insult your girlfriend or your mum or your country or, you know, your thing. Um, and that really gets, you know, gets you back up, doesn't it? And I get it. And he's in love with her, probably. And he's seeing, imagine, imagine that, even if you, if you had this girlfriend um, and the whole world was criticizing her, rightly or wrongly, you'd jump to her defense. So I do get it and I get how, why he feels how he does. And unfortunately, love, for better or worse, has brought him into this just absurd situation where he's now, he's gone from being a royal who's like this unknowable, impenetrable, quite cool, good looking guy uh, you know, waving from afar, people queuing up in the streets to show him their support, to like sitting in a courtroom with the barrister from the Rebecca Vardy, Colleen Rooney case, which for non-UK people, it's like these football, soccer uh, mums, <laughs> you know? It's a really huge descent from the walls the private walls of Eton College to where he is now and that's happened in the matter in a matter of months and at the bottom of all of this is this feeling of like uh, it's the hypocrisy again and obviously I've already alluded to the fact that South Park pointed out you know the privacy tour that in itself is an oxymoron you know you don't do a tour to try and show off how private you are, because obviously it's just going to bring more attention on you. But there's a different hypocrisy this time, uh, and that is this idea that oh, everybody's trying to hack hack me and and use my stories for their own benefit. And, and I do have sympathy for that. The issue is he just wrote an entire book about people who didn't want their names in there. Some have spoken about you know the woman he lost his virginity to. I'm not going to bring up her name and occupation. Well. No, I don't need to do that again because she doesn't need to be brought up again because she hasn't written a book about loads of people giving up what they, you know, their personal details. He went so far into detail about the woman he lost his virginity to for no reason. It was totally unnecessary. He took zero care about sort of public casualties in this and just spread everyone's dirty laundry for everyone to see in one of the most read books of all time. Now, you guys know that I read that book spare, so you don't have to. So at the end, I'm going to pop up some little bits so you can, I want you to see some of the conclusions I came to from reading some of Harry's, well, Harry's so-called Harry's writing, but actually uh, the ghostwriter's writing. But, you know, the, what I'm getting at here, the hypocrisy is just outrageous. Somebody who's literally just made millions off of a book that just gives away the secrets and the privacy of everyone around him. Descriptions of his father, the King of England. And by the way, I'm no royalist. I'm no anti-royalist either. I don't really care. Uh, you know, what I care about is anybody having their son giving up private information about them for the world to read. And he's got entire scenes devoted to uh, describing his dad doing headstands in his boxers on the floor like a lunatic. Like the world needed those images. He's got scenes of Prince William saying, don't hang around with me at school when he was a kid. Like he doesn't want that out in the world. And yet we're supposed to now feel sympathy. And it's the same thing again, victim, victim, victim. He's been holding back tears. He's been on the verge of crying. He's been saying everything that's happened in my life, you know, and all these things. It's it's really sad to watch, and I do believe he's being completely honest. I really do, and I have sympathy for him. And there's these, you know, these bits are coming out about finding a tracking device on the car of his ex-girlfriend Chelsea Davy. But Harry, in his book Spare, 
writes loads about Chelsea Davy and he describes her as somebody who doesn't want press attention and that the press went for her anyway. And the thing he liked about her was that she didn't want to be involved in it. And he's writing this in chapters, give, divulging more information about Chelsea Davy than anyone ever needed to know. She must be livid reading that. Anyway, the, it's going on at the moment. I don't know how this is going to end, but all I've read so far is just the judges saying, you know, there's no evidence. You can't just say things and decide them and then, you know, and that's come out as well. There's been yet another example of him acting like a spoilt child, being ratty and emotional and thinking that rules are different for him. Again, I don't blame him. He grew up in this fishbowl, like made of gold. So, of course, he, it just winds me up. It winds me up that they're just all over the newspapers and that's all I see and that he doesn't understand that he's the most privileged person in the world. Um, and he keeps having a go at the judges. He's going, my Lord, and, and having a go at them and saying, the evidence is right in front of you and all these things. And they're going, no, this is not evidence. This, this is things that you are alleging. So I can't see him winning. And I think it's just yet another way to get his face in the papers, to be honest. And it's really, really sad. So that's what I think of that. Um, and do ask a couple of questions. Let me see. I'll scroll down and answer a couple of questions for a bit. If you've got super chats, if anyone doesn't mind giving some of those, because my episodes don't get monetized because they're about naughty things. Uh, so do... Um, do, do some super chats so I can see them if you want. But I'll, I, obviously, no one needs to do that. Um, and I will, I'm will. i just scrolling down now to see if there's any any questions. Um, ba, ba, ba. Oh, gosh. Not that I'm an, an expert ex, ex, or, or anything, really. But it's always nice to answer questions on it. And we can all have a chat about it. Yeah, well, this is it. Uh, hang on. Miss Susie making that point I was making about King Charles. Remember, father's naked headstands. I can't erase that image. And that's it. You do have an image now of King Charles doing naked headstands. And you shouldn't have to have that. And I did a video because I actually think, unfortunately, that particular story involved Harry trying to sort of get into Charles's room. And Charles would be, no, 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 don't come in because he's in his boxers and he's doing a headstand. Don't come in. But I think if you're doing a headstand naked, which I don't think you have to be naked, for, well, okay, fine. You can just go, oh, quickly, one second and then open the door. And I think that he might have been doing something a bit naughtier. And why shouldn't he be? You know, okay, he's the king of England, but men have needs or, or something. And I think that he uh, gave that away. And Limleif says, if Joe Rogan did naked headstands, people would celebrate it. Who gives an F? Uh, I shouldn't say because, again, I'm getting in trouble with YouTube, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it, it doesn't matter. I don't judge uh, King Charles for that at all. The point is, it, it wouldn't you wouldn't be having a go at Joe Rogan. But if Joe Rogan's son had written a book about it, again, it's not something that Joe Rogan would care about. But if you're trying to be some sort of posh head of state and your son reveals these things, I don't think the son then has the right to go around complaining about privacy. So that's the point, really. Um, people sometimes, uh, some of these questions are saying, you know, he didn't choose to be born into the royal family in that, and I think that's absolutely a good point, I, and I, I understand that. But my point is about the hypocrisy. It's about him giving away everybody else's secrets while complaining about the invasion of privacy, taking the money from doing so, and also taking the money... That, I mean, that's what the royal family lives from. Okay, you want to leave it? Leave it. But don't then make millions by selling the stories about other people and then also complain and call yourself a victim all the time. There was that scene when he was in Eton looking out and saying, saying how lucky, like you, all of you guys, how lucky you guys are, how lucky we are that we're not inside those walls. And like to, to an extent, he has a point. I get it. Like I, I don't think I'd want his life, but I don't think he has any appreciation for how hard most people have it. And he should have some appreciation despite growing up in that fishbowl because a lot of his work was charity work. That's a lot of the stuff he's had to do over the years. He's had to be around poverty. He just doesn't seem to feel empathy for it. So mm -mm -mm. let's see. Thank you very much, uh, Electric Boogaloo. What a name that is. In Australia, apparently, for the super chat thing. Really, really appreciate it. It helps to keep the channel running. As I say, so much of my stuff is demonetized, which is very, very frustrating. Um, 
Why do you think he is? Wait, oh no, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry, guy. No, it's, it doesn't make for great video watching, does it? When I'm sort of scrolling down here. Question. Oh, electric boogaloo. Which story about Scientology or the Royals would you love to have been around to cover and why? Well, obviously, the one I mentioned before about the Tampax stuff, and that's just for obvious reasons. The bit about Prince Charles, uh, his conversation being intercepted and him talking about wanting to be uh, a Tampax or whatever. Now, it's creepy and weird, but we're all, you know, I, I think it's actually humanizing. I think it shows the human side of them, and I think that's a great story, and I wish I'd written something about that. And I think I might have given, at that time, if I were reporting around that time in the 90s, I'd have given a different um, twist on the Diana stuff. I mean, may she rest in peace, of course. I have endless respect for her, but there is something about <sighs> Diana and Meghan in... I just think, you know... <sighs> You don't have to marry, and I know there was pressure from their families and whatever, from Diana's family. You don't have to marry a royal. I wouldn't do it. And then I just feel like if you're going to do it and get all the money and get all the glamour and get all that stuff from it, then do it, you know, rather than just complain. She was really young in her defense and, and she was pushed into doing all these things. But I think that would have been an interesting time to be around. If you're talking about Scientology, a different topic, of course, uh, I would... I think that I think I'd have loved to have been reporting in 2005, back when Tom Cruise was jumping on all the sofas and things. I think that was a uh, a really e e exciting time. Nos says Andrew, someone asked what your skin and hair care regimen is. Did someone ask that? I didn't see that. Um, I don't really have one. Does it look okay? Uh, my skin was bad for some time. It's 11 o'clock here. I'm pretty tired. My car just got towed. It got towed because it broke down. Um, and we waited hours until they took it back. I just got back. It's after 11 p.m. And I thought, you know what? My fiance, Holly, is editing an episode of mine with Richard Dawkins, where I interviewed him in uh, London a few days ago. And that's coming out actually on the audio podcast, Spotify and Apple, that's coming out in about 40 minutes from now. Well, exactly 40 minutes. Uh, and on YouTube, it will be out tomorrow night. And that's a big one. And he really insults someone <laughs> from the pop culture person he really, really goes for. And he talks about J.K. Rowling and stuff like that. So that's going to be a really interesting one. Uh, Willie Weed, aren't the royal families known for inbreeding? Doesn't make the smartest people. I think you're right. I think you're right. I don't know. I don't know uh, the ins and outs of what that makes someone into. But I think they are known for it. Uh, I don't know how much that's like cousins and brothers and things and all that. Why isn't Meghan supporting him, Linrich says. I don't know. And that's interesting as well. And look, again, I want to be uh, not black and white. I want to say these are not evil people. And I think you could make the argument that she didn't go to the coronation, Meghan Markle, and she didn't go to this court case to support him because it would distract from either the coronation of King Charles III or... Uh, the court case of Prince Harry, which is about them. So I do see that side. It would become all about her. So I get it. But it might also be because she doesn't love him and she doesn't care and she's just doing her own thing. You know, I, I have no idea. Um, right, scrolling down just to see if there is more star, more questions. Got... Jiu-Jitsu Spider, why has no one introduced Harry to what a ruined childhood actually looks like? Well, that's my point as well. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. That scene, honestly, if you do get to that bit, and I've, you know what, that's a bit I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that afterwards. I'm going to find that later and put that as an end screen to this. That is completely bonkers, the scene where he's talking to a fox because he's high in the Eton bathrooms after his friends seem to be trying to get away from him because he's just annoying to be around. And... He starts just going, gosh, the people out there, how lucky they are. And the people out there, if he's in Eton looking outwards, he's looking from Eton, the poshest place on earth. He's looking out into Slough, Staines, and these other places, which British people will tell you, you know, they're, they're fine and lovely places, you know, but it's not places full of um, affluence, to say the least. So... When, that is one of the maddest scenes. And even I've spoken to certain celebrities um, who I've interviewed and stuff like that who have said, hey, you know, maybe you've been a bit harsh on Harry and Meghan and all that. But they've gone, but that bit and the bit about the Spice Girls, the way that Harry sort of looked down his nose at the Spice Girls because they had to like, because they played to the cameras and he was above that. And it's like, of course, you're above that. You don't have to do anything. You just have 
endless money. Now you're not in the royal family, you actually have to write a book, but you even even then you've got someone else to write it for you and just criticised everyone else. Um, the Spice Girls grew up working class and had to actually work, and they had to work with the press to to do well. So he just utterly does not understand. Um, Movi Bauer says, why is Harry so eager to disclose everything remotely embarrassing about his family? Does he think it makes his mistakes lesser, like the Nazi uniform? I wonder, I wonder, but I think I think more than anything, yes, well, it is to make himself the victim. And no matter how many times we've said, yeah, well, we, we can see through it, you know? I don't know. Pat Shaw, thank you so much for the super chat. As I say, it keeps this channel alive. It keeps what I'm just going to start now, Edge TV going, um, which which will which will be hopefully quite often these lives and things. So I do appreciate that, Pat Shaw, to, uh, for, for helping it, keeping it going. And Pat says, I blame Megan. She was nothing but a two-bit character who wanted the royal life, but then complains when she gets it, have never liked her and never will. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, well, you know, I, I agree. And again, I'm going to reiterate, I always do. I know it's boring. I'm going to say a boring thing. It's a boring thing. People are complex. People are not black and white. She is not the worst person in the world. However, you know, I think if you put yourself in a situation like she's done, you're open to criticism, just as I am. I'm in the public eye. I'm not giving out books and documentaries about my family. I certainly am not doing that, and I would never do that. Uh, but I'm out in the public eye. I'm putting opinions out there, and I get criticised. I get threats. I get people saying they're going to come and do this and that to me. It's part of. It's just part of and parcel of it. I think the difference is I'm actually trying to work my bottom off, where she's just like marrying someone. But you know, whatever. Uh, but thank you, Pat, and thank you, uh, Sandra for keeping this channel going as well. Sandra in Canada, really, really generous of you. Thank you for, for, for doing it. I've seen you around here before. It's always lovely to see. Uh, I recognize so many names now. And like I say, you're helping to keep this channel going. You're helping to keep it um, running because it's all bloody demonetized. That's why I have to keep being really careful of what I say. It's, it's, it's a nightmare, really. I put, I put episodes out that I've spent weeks putting effort into. And... Uh, you put it out there and there's a little green thing, a little green dollar sign, like, oh, it's it's live and the ads are allowed in it. And it's only an episode about maybe I mention those people from the 1930s in Germany. I mean, but the, the you know, that that word or something. And then it turns um wait, what colour does it turn? Is it red? Can't remember now. <laughs> I've got enough of them. No, it turns yellow, doesn't it? I've got them here. And it's just the worst worst feeling you're like I've, I've spent weeks on that and can't even earn from it so thank you guys for keeping this going uh lady pamela do you think they will last the long haul megan and harry are they really in love still and will they stay that way my late grandmother she she passed away 10 15 years ago but i remember we had a bet uh she bet that the beckhams wouldn't last and they're still together you know 15 years after her death so <sighs> Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, who knows whether there's real love there or just ambition and victimhood. Jack, why did he wait so long to bring his claim? He says because he started to feel sorry for Megan. I think it's because he's done his book. He's got another three books as part of that book deal. What the hell is he going to write about if he doesn't write about this? So that's what it is going to be. Um, scrolling down quite fast, so forgive me if I don't catch your things. Feel free to send in the, the whatever's chat things um, 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 um wasn't harry playing with the cameras says kd by entering the court through the door with all the paps it's a good point there must be a back entrance it, it is all part of of something you know we know as south park alluded to we know that they are um dealing with pr companies who are trying to massage their images right now uh, and a big part of that is playing the victim. But it's going down so badly. Their their popularity points have been just falling and falling. Um, and we know, you know, that thing the other week about the, the car chase through New York that, that they made up uh, and the suggestion that um, Harry's, you know, basically a, co a, a, a copy, a carbon copy of what happened to Harry's um, uh, mother, Diana, was just so low. And it went down so badly. And the mayor of New York said this didn't happen. You know, it's all part, you're right, it's all a strategy. It's all playing with the media and all that kind of stuff. And it's bad. 
Thank you, Imiris, uh, for this lovely chat saying, love your work, Andrew Love from Australia. I'd love to go to Australia. We've just got my, my football team, soccer team, soccer team, um, <laughs> Tottenham, Tottenham. Just got a new manager who is Australian called Ange Posta, something, Pont Posta Coglu. Posta Coglu. Uh, so I'm feeling very happy with the Australians right now, if, if he does well, at least. Uh, thank you so much for the Aussie dollars there. Very, very helpful and very lovely. People are so generous. It's just remarkable. J-A-T for nine, for the, the pounds. Nine, lovely super sticker. Didn't even ask a question. Just wanted to help the channel. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, Julianne, uh, Julianne, Julianne Moore, I'm thinking of. Uh, she's great. Sorry about your car tow. It set us back uh, a lot of money. Do you know what happens? The car, I was taking my in-laws to the airport. The car suddenly started going on fire, right, steaming at the front. Very scary. Luckily, we'd just arrived at the airport and um, um, called the insurance and all that, and they were sending out a breakdown recovery thing. And that's supposed to, it says, we'll come in less than 60 minutes. And they were predicting they were going to arrive in nine hours. We just sat at the airport, me and my fiance, just like, yeah, just, just sat at the airport. Uh, eventually, we just called a private company who came out and did it. And it's like, well, what was the point in having insurance? So we're going to try, you know, going to go mental about that. I don't know how interesting that is for you guys, but I got to sit in a big tow truck as they towed us back to um, our home. So that was all very exciting. <laughs> Thank you for all your messages, everyone. Um, Apparently from Flutter by H.G. Tudor, who's been on this show a couple of times before, uh, talking about Prince Harry and stuff like that, says that Harry will not get another book published. I would not be surprised if that's true, because what the heck is going to go in his next bloody episode, uh, next book, sorry. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Nosferatu says the American accent is getting better. That's how we all sound. <coughs> it made me <coughs> get a bit choky there. Per Selma says, did you hear about Mike Rinder getting his care? Absolutely. Unfortunately, ex-Scientologist Mike Rinder, one of the top uh, former Scientologists, has uh, fallen ill with cancer. I think it's esophagus cancer. Uh, there's a video that Aaron Smith-Levin put out on growing up in Scientology that shows where you can donate money to to help him get the care that he needs. We're all thinking of him. I've sent him a private email, of course. I don't usually speak about these things. Um, publicly, I think there can be a fine line between doing so, you know, I... What if my video got loads of views and brought subscribers to my channel, then I'm benefiting from it and I need to, you know, and I, sometimes I feel like those things are best done privately, but I can assure you I have sent um, him a private email and we've had a private correspondence about things and, uh, you know, everyone at On The Edge and SPTV and all you guys will be thinking of Mike and uh, it sounds like he could, you know, get get through this, so so hopefully he he will. Victoria High says, for your information, I would love to see more live streams, please. And then there's all the Edgehog uh, logos. Yeah, I would love to do that. And, and I think I will. And like I say, I'll call it for now Edge TV uh, and come in with pop culture and things like that. Stuff like today uh, and, and see how it goes. Guys, thank you so much for your support, for being here, for all the, all the things. Please like the thing. Sometimes a survey pops up and says, are you happy with these things? Make sure you click that thing. Those are the things that spread the things. I'll keep saying things, of course. And watch... This stuff that's going to pop up about um, things I've talked about today, because that's to continue the story, to learn more about the whole Prince Harry and Meghan stuff. See you very soon. You've been watching Edge TV.